We have all heard haunting radio calls for help from a lost firefighter running out of air. Whether it's New Haven, Hackensack, Houston, or New York, no department is immune to this scenario. When we take a look at past line of duty deaths and injuries, we see a need for conservative air management training, safer staffing, and trained rapid intervention teams. However, even with the best training, the inherent dangers of this job demand that our members are afforded the best chance of surviving an out of air emergency. I present the last chance rescue filter. Presently, after an out of air emergency, firefighters have no protection. The last chance rescue filter is a canister that is rated to provide 15 minutes of breathable air to the very firefighter that is in trouble. It could make the difference between a fatality and a close call. It's the firefighter's last chance to escape the building if they have an out of air emergency. It's not for 15 more minutes, it's to lock in and get out. Basically, it locks into the SCBA and it just changes from a positive breathing from the SCBA to a negative. And it's just inhale, exhale, about uh, three inches of water is the breathing resistance on it. My job as an incident commander, as a matter of fact, the job of all fire officers is to make sure all their firefighters come home in the same condition they began the day in. Every structure fire should come with a return trip ticket. The last chance rescue device could be that ticket. Changeover. I gotta hear the record. Find some doors. This study is essentially, instead of having our kids go to our funeral, us coming home and seeing our kids in the morning. The way the last chance rescue filter works is by filtering out particulates as well as toxic fire gases such as acrolein, hydrogen chloride, hydrogen cyanide, and it converts carbon monoxide into CO2. A review of 105 fire fatalities found that soot and the gases that we mentioned were found to be contributing factors in the death of all the victims. What about the availability of oxygen in a structure fire? A 2006 study conducted by Yale University and presented at the National Conference of Emergency Physicians found that in a residential structure fire, carbon monoxide poses a greater threat to life than lack of oxygen or heat. The data that I'm aware of suggests that carbon monoxide is the major killer uh, in fire situations and cyanide may be second. Some medical dictionaries uh, describe asphyxiation as a a situation where there's a reduced amount or inadequate amount of oxygen in the environment outside the body. Uh, if that's the case, um, that really wouldn't apply to carbon monoxide or cyanide because the level of oxygen in the environment could be perfectly normal. Firefighters continue to die while waiting for RIT. When a firefighter runs out of air, their first inclination is to rip off their mask. However, the canister is attached directly to the mask without removing gloves or helmet. This allows the RIT team to easily attach supplied breathing apparatus. The last chance rescue filter has been tested to the EN403 standard and independently validated by Yale School of Medicine. We have people here from Dallas, California, New York City, Detroit, Maryland. Basically, we've been in teams of three where one individual would wear this and two firefighters would go in side by side with that individual with the regular SCBAs. And we've done everything from exercising to getting laying on the floor and sitting there for the 10 minutes or whatever the duration of the test is. It's easy to use. Uh, not at all cumbersome. I thought it was pretty awesome. So the carbon monoxide levels were really high and uh, it worked great, it worked phenomenal. That it can remove very high levels of carbon monoxide from the air with fairly large flow rates is pretty astounding. I'm quite impressed. 
you know, even if you never use it, just the uh, confidence that you have going in with it, it's it's well worth it. If we did ever run out of air, that I could get out if I had to. Good peace of mind. Well, when you run out of air, it's a scary situation. It's the scariest thing you can ever happen to. You, you want to get out, and it's, you know, it's like you're drowning. I, I was in there for 10 minutes, and at no point in time did I feel like I was in any danger of, I, I was breathing fine. The, uh, the only thing with the unit is it starts to get a little warm, a little dryness in your, your throat because it's warm air, it's filtering. But uh, I thought it worked fine. Now that they've actually used it, I think people are pretty impressed with the outcome of today's event. It's been real productive so far. It was a good experience. It, it, I think it could definitely save somebody's life.